for the Emperor! What's going on, folks? It's Blue here at Blue Bears Games, and as promised, today's video will be an upgrade guide for the Warhammer 40k Commander Precon, Forces of the Imperium. Normally, when I do an upgrade guide for a Wazi Precon, I give a lot of options, and usually the amount that I give ends up being enough to pretty much replace the entire deck. But, starting with this guide and going forward, all of my Wasi Precon upgrade guides will have about a dozen or so suggestions, and now I'll even give suggestions on what to take out as well. One other small change for just this video is that I will be doing a guide for mana fixing lands, but for future guides, I will direct people to this video because the information I'm about to give will be universal for pretty much all other Watsi Commander Precons currently available or will become available in the years to come. Before I get to that though, let's talk about what direction I want to take the Forces of the Imperium deck in first. I mentioned in the unboxing that I believe that this deck feels like it could go in an aristocrats theme direction, and while that is not wrong, I think that should be the sub-theme. The main theme that I want to take this in is to go heavier into a token-making, go-wide based strategy, and to do that, I want to switch out Inquisitor Grey Fox as the general, and switch in the secondary option, Marnius Kalgor as the main general. Marnius may be one more to cast, but has a bigger butt, and its abilities that deal with tokens seem much better for helping this deck than the Inquisitor does. So, that's the first change I would make, but before I go into some of the other changes that I want to make for this deck specifically, let me do the Mana Fixing Land Upgrade Guide real quick. We all know that Watsi Commander Precons are notorious for having a pretty bad land base for fixing mana in decks that are two or more colors. And obviously, the more colors, the worse it is. I've made the suggestions I'm about to make dozens of times, and honestly, I'm tired of repeating myself. So, this will be the last time I do it, and as I mentioned earlier, I will just direct people to this video from now on if anyone really needs to be told this. All of the final type of lands exist in the game that can help fix mana, and either do or can enter play untapped so they won't slow your deck down, minus the second to last suggestion I'm going to give. These lands with examples are the OG Dual Lands, Shock Lands, Fetch Lands, the OG Check Lands, the newer Innistrad Check Lands, Bond Lands, Pathways, Pain Lands, Triomes for 3 plus color decks, and Mana Confluence, which can go in any deck that just really needs access to good mana fixing in general. Minus the Mana Confluence, all of these lands come in every color combination you could possibly need, and are integral to helping any deck gain access to the color that they need to cast anything in your deck. When upgrading any deck, usually, and I stress usually, this will be the most expensive part of your deck. Now, with that out of the way, let me continue the guide for the forces of the Imperium deck. First up is a card called Havengul Laboratory, which transforms into Havengul Mystery. The laboratory side creates clue tokens, and if you read Marnius' ability closely, you'll notice that its second ability states that when a token is created, and it does not specify what type, so any token created will trigger the ability and you will draw a card. Then, when you eventually do flip it to the mystery side, you get some graveyard recursion of creatures that could get you back a key piece that may have been removed from the battlefield to rejoin the fight. Since the sub-theme I want for this deck is Aristocrats, things will die, and you will want them back at some point, so having the ability to do so repeatedly makes this a great choice. As far as what to remove, I would simply swap out one of the basic swamps. While the front side only produces colorless mana, the back side can produce black mana if you need it. Next, I would swap in a Chromatic Lantern. In my opinion, this is one of the best mana fixing rocks in the game, and any deck that is three or more colors can only benefit from this being in the deck. The easiest choice to make here is to swap out the Commander's Sphere for it. They cost the same to cast, and both tap to add for a color that you need, but the Lantern fixes your mana the entire time it's out, while the Sphere only nets you one card draw one time, and then it's gone. It seems like a no-brainer to me. As far as creatures go, I have three upgrades that I would make. First is Mondrick Glory Dominus. Mondrick is one of the very few token doublers outside of green. It can enable some combos and is a natural fit for the token strategy that I'm trying to take this build in. My second suggestion is going to be just one of many that you could swap in that fit the aristocrat's strategy, Blood Artist. There are about roughly 13 or so different creatures that would help edge damage off of your opponents, and Blood Artist is just one of the most recognized of the bunch. Again though, you could actually fill in a bunch of spots with aristocrat style creatures if you like. And the last creature that I'll mention is Curiosity Crafter. It is a great utility card for a go-wide strategy because it can help 
fuel your hand with cards while also making sure you get to keep that fuel. The three cards that I would swap out for these are Cybernetica Datasmith, Sister Repentia, and Triumph of St. Catherine. All three of them have abilities that don't match the go-wide token-based strategy or the Aristocrats one, and what they do actually do isn't enough to warrant a spot in this deck regardless of what you do with this deck in my opinion. As far as instants and sorceries go, there are a ton of staples in these colors that could be swapped in. If you don't know the staples of these colors by now, I'm sure you can look it up somewhere, and if not, I may be doing a video about the staples for each color for Commander at some point, but for now, I want to show you two sorceries that aren't staples that would fit perfectly in the strategy that I'm going for. First is White Sun's Twilight. There are a few X spells in white that create creature tokens of some sort, but none do as much as this one does. The creatures it creates have Toxic, which can be an alternate win con of poison, it gains you life, and it can destroy all other creatures on the battlefield if you pay 5 or more mana for the X. Everything about this card just fits well, and this version of this effect does more than all the others do. The second sorcery is actually a newer card called Crisis in Conscience. I did mention in the unboxing that while I'm late to the party doing these guides, the advantage is that I have a lot more newer cards to suggest than some of the older guides do, and this is one of them. Crisis in Conscience can actually help reset the board of everything but lands and tokens, which includes taking out a lot of things that would normally require a multitude of cards to do so. Casting this could potentially leave you as the only player who has anything but lands on the board, and that's perfect for what I want to do with this deck. To make room for these two cards, I would take out And They Shall Know No Fear and For the Emperor. I'd swap these out because I'm not a fan of one-time buff spells unless they are pretty much going to guarantee taking out a player or two like Triumph of the Hordes can do, and both of these don't seem to have that type of punch. Moving on to enchantments, I have two I like. One is a card I believe to be a staple in all black decks, and the other is a staple in any aristocrat deck. Black Market Connection is the card I believe should be a staple in all black decks. Not everyone will agree with me, and that's okay, but it does three things that you can choose to do or not do in every one of your pre-combat main phases that all seem really good. The treasure tokens can be both mana ramp and mana fixing. Card draw is just a no-brainer of a good thing. And the token creation can be good in general or for any token-based or combat-based strategy. I really do believe it can fill a lot of things you want to do in a game of Commander in one card. Yes, the life you spend may be a detriment, but that's what Black does anyway, isn't it? The other enchantment is Bastion of Remembrance. For Aristocrats-based strategies, having access to non-creature-based ways of dealing damage is important because in my experience, more creature removal is used than enchantment removal. And, usually, there are more devastating enchantments that will probably get targeted than this. Ristic Study comes to mind. With that said, the two cards that I would swap out for these two are Redemptor Dreadnought and Grey Knight Paragon. Like the other creatures I suggested earlier, these two just don't fit into what I want to do with this deck now, so they gotta go. I like what the Dreadnought is trying to do, but it feels more Voltron-esque than going wide, which is the opposite direction that I'm trying to go in. Next, I have one artifact I want to try out in this type of theme, Halo Fountain. The theme I'm going for is to turn lots of dudes sideways and go burr, and Halo Fountain wants to untap those dudes to give you benefits. One benefit is to create more dudes, one is to give you fuel or draw you cards, and the last one is to actually just win you the game. I feel that there is no downside to the fountain for this deck, only pure upside, and I'd love to see how well this thought plays out. To make room for the Halo Fountain, I suggest removing Knight Paladin. There isn't much of a graveyard recursion theme left, so there's no chance of looping the Paladin, so a one-time enter the battlefield effect that deals 4 damage is kind of meh here, and can easily be removed. I'm also not much of a vehicle fan, so I'm likely also biased on this removal. Now, this deck did not come with any Planeswalkers in the box, but I feel like Liliana Dreadhorde General would be a great addition. Drawing cards, creating tokens, and forcing sacrifices are all things that most decks want to do, and this one is no different. The only downside is the casting cost is high, but this Liliana is definitely an endgame planeswalker anyway. To add Liliana, I would remove Calidus Assassin because there are better cards for copying creatures that cost less mana. They also don't force you to destroy the creature if you choose to copy your own. 
I understand that you could use it to copy an opponent's commander while also destroying theirs, but it may not be possible if people you play use effects that make targeting their commander nigh impossible, and then you're left with a subpar creature that doesn't forward your idea in any way. And lastly, I'm going to show you a combo that uses the commander and two other cards. With Marnius, Ashnod's Altar, and Anointed Procession on the field, you can create infinite colorless mana. Along the way, you will also get infinite enters the battlefield, leaves the battlefield, token creation, and sacrifice triggers as well. If you don't see it, I'll explain real quick. With all three cards on the battlefield, use Marnius' ability to create tokens. The Anointed Procession's replacement effect will trigger, creating four creature tokens. Sacrifice at least three of them to the altar for six mana, and then rinse and repeat. Now, you can either sack the extra token to the altar for two floating colorless mana each cycle, or you can leave it on the field for an instant infinite token army. It's up to you what you do at this point, but I hear Torment of Hellfire for a million is pretty devastating. To make room for the two cards for the combo, I suggest removing the last two vehicles, Thunderhawk Gunship and Reaver Titan. Again, I'm not a fan of vehicles in general, but in a deck that wants all of its creatures attacking, there isn't much room for crewing vehicles in my book. And that's what I've got for you as far as upgrade suggestions go for the Warhammer 40k Forces of the Imperium Commander Precon. I like the direction I tried to take this deck in, and hopefully the things I suggested will help you improve the performance of this deck. I'm hoping that the new formatting for how I did this upgrade guide is to your liking and was less cluttered than my previous ones. Any feedback on this would be greatly appreciated in the comment section. So while that is all for now, next week I will be doing the same thing for the Ruinous Powers Warhammer 40k Commander Precon, so please be sure to join me for that. As always, thank you for watching, please remember to give the video a thumbs up, and I will see you all next week. Have a great day!